Thank you. First off, I'd like to thank all of you for coming today. In the time that we have together, I'm going to present, along with my partner Brad, some very exciting trading techniques that really have history that predates any of the Western technical trading styles that most are familiar with. The first thing I'd like to ask is just with a basic show of hands, how many people are familiar with candlesticks, Japanese candlesticks? We've got about three quarters of the audience. We will cover some of the basics, what composes a candlestick, how it's differentiated from a bar chart, and how they developed. We'll cover that ground for the first part of the session. After that, we're really going to begin to incorporate our ideas and techniques within some actual charts. And we're going to try to cover many of the different commodity groups, such as the grains, the meats, the energies, and the metals markets. To give you a little bit of history about how we began and and the development of this technique and how we utilize it is quite interesting. I'm a CTA, a registered commodity trading advisor. I have been trading the markets since the early 80s. In fact, when I first began trading the markets, I would use my eye to draw a trend line. And I'd use a pencil rather than a computer key, uh, keystroke or keyboard. What happened was, in the mid 80s, there was a proliferation of computer programs that came out that made traders like yourself and myself have the tools that prior to that were only available in the large financial institutional trading houses. In other words, they had the ability to call a programmer in and spend three, four hundred thousand dollars and have them program proprietary techniques. I utilized a service called FutureSource. And Future Source back in the mid, I would say towards the end of the 80s, early 90s, were one of the first to put candlesticks on their screen. I remember when I first saw candlesticks, I said to myself, what are these funny little characters? What do they represent? Now, back at that time, there was really no knowledge or anything available for one to do any kind of research to understand what they meant. And in fact, I searched high and low, and it was one of my clients who introduced me to a book called The Japanese Chart of Charts by Seiko Shimuzi. This is really what we consider our Rosetta Stone in that it was translated in the mid-80s, and it was the first time that this technique was revealed to the Western traders. It really didn't take off too well. But what happened was, back in the 80s, the Japanese became very, very aggressive traders in our markets. And what happened was, not only were they aggressive, but they had an uncanny ability to predict the markets. Their success rate was much, much higher than the success rates of the traders not utilizing their techniques. As any trader will tell you, if they're if there's something that works, we all want to know about it. So what happened is the Japanese became very successful in our markets. Many people began to search out what techniques they were using that gave them an edge or an advantage. And that really was the moment or the pivot point in which they became very popular. What had happened is I did a little bit of research, and I saw that not only were they able to visually show you price movement over time in a much more three-dimensional way, but that was only the tip of the iceberg. The 90% underneath was the fact that they had recognized that there were patterns that could define reversal or pivot points in a market. The best way to put it is that candlestick patterns are a mathematical formula which illustrates the psychological market sentiment. In other words, as a market reverses or as a market is moving in an uptrend, there are certain 
traits that can be distilled in terms of mathematical formulas that will reveal some very, very important information. Now, what had happened is, as I was looking at these charts on FutureSource, I realized that it was very difficult for me to understand all of the patterns. And one day as I was looking at a chart, I came up with the idea that someone should develop an interpreter so that all we had to do was put the chart up on the screen, push a button, and it would reveal the pattern to the end user. Uh, Brad, who had been an acquaintance of mine for many, many years, was a devout computer programmer. He was very interested in trading. I was very interested in learning how to program, and I presented the idea to Brad. In fact, I came to him one day with a, with a series of kind of cryptic pictures, and I said, Brad, I want to create a program that will take these little funny characters and develop some sort of a, uh, a knowledge base so that all we have to do is push a button and have it revealed. Brad then asked me, I said, Brad, do you think you could accomplish that for me? He then asked me a whole series of questions. And at the end of it, he said, Gary, I think I can do that. And that's how the two of us really unified ourselves and became a team and have been working now for about five years in terms of development of this strategy. And as you'll see in the presentation, it is not just candlesticks alone. What we have done is we have combined Eastern technical trading and Western technical trading, put them both together to create a synergistic approach which is much more dynamic than using either of them separately. In fact, in Japan, candlesticks are not used without using moving averages and other Western technicals. To give you a little bit of history about candlesticks themselves, they predate our bar charts by about 200 years. In fact, long before W. Gan ever put a pencil to a piece of paper, the Japanese had a way to chart price movement over time. The way that that came about is in the late 16th century, one of the first commodity exchanges were formed, the Dojima Commodity Exchange. One must realize that rice at that time was the most sacred commodity to the Japanese. In fact, samurai warriors were paid not in gold, but they were paid in rice. And so that it was very important in terms of their culture and their economy to have some sort of feel for the way that the level of prices fluctuated with rice. There was a gentleman that came from a very wealthy family, and they controlled most of the rice. This gentleman came up with certain patterns that had the ability to predict changes in market sentiment. The first thing that I, I would like to tell you in terms of basic differences between a Western technical trading and Eastern technical trading is how we place our emphasis. For example, if I say that the Dow closed up 20 points, all of us are, will automatically infer the following, that yesterday's close was 20 points below today's close. In other words, the first charts that the Western technicians drew were what we call a line chart. And we would plot close, 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 and draw a line to each of them. The reason being, is that the Western technician places its greatest emphasis on that relationship between the close and the prior day's close. The Japanese took a much more unique approach. The emphasis that is placed upon Japanese charts is not between the close and compared to the prior close, but rather they compare the open of a current session to the close of a current session. Now the reason that they do this is they feel that each day during a trading session there is a basic battle going on. And the battle is between the bulls and the bears. 
And the outcome of that battle is graphically illustrated in a candlestick. In other words, by looking at the net result of where it opened to where it closed, one can ascertain who actually was able to dominate market activity. And so the most important thing that we'll begin with is that they place their greatest emphasis on the relationship between the open and close of that session. Then they will then compare it to the prior days, and as we'll get into in a little bit, create patterns from them. Now, we're going to start with just some very, very basics. And, and if we can view uh, the little piece of paper that we have down here, it's a little crooked, so I'm going to straighten it out. I, I assume that everyone here is familiar with a bar chart in that we have a vertical line. The bottom represents the low of the day. The top represents the high of that trading cycle. They put a horizontal slash to the left-hand side. That represents the open. And they put a horizontal slash to the right-hand side to represent the close. Now, this is a day in which it closed lower. On a day that it closes higher, of course, we put the open here and the close there. But the one thing that you can see is that when you look at these two candles, you really have to concentrate to discern if it closed higher or closed lower. It's not that apparent. All the Japanese did is as follows to create a candlestick because the open to close relationship is so important they draw a rectangle from the open to closing price now if the market opens and then closes higher that is known as an empty candle a white candle if the market opens and then closes lower we call that a full candle or a black candle the third type of candle is called a doji. A doji, as a matter of fact, is the only candlestick type that looks identical on a bar chart and a candlestick chart. Now, the first thing that w one can realize by looking at that is that as a market moves in a defined trend up or down, because we have a visual representation, black or white, one can view large segments of price data very, very quickly and can ascertain movement and direction much easier than a bar chart. The second thing is that all of the technical techniques, the Western techniques that you have been utilizing, are still incorporated in candlesticks. Steve Nissan has said that it is a win-win situation. In other words, by using candlesticks, you give nothing up, but you gain insight into it, and that really is the beauty of it.